In the last few videos I've shown how to test the boards for the transistor processor and uh, shown it running a very basic program. Uh, that program was a test program from the original transistor processor and that processor didn't have any jump instructions. It just had the basic uh, add, load and out instructions. So this processor is, is a lot more advanced and if we look at the instruction set that it supports it has the original five instructions, but it also has uh, five jump instructions. So it has the basic unconditional jump. It has jump carry, jump not carry, jump zero, and jump not zero instructions. They make a huge difference to the programs that the device can run. It can obviously make decisions, whereas before it could only run through a linear program starting at the beginning and running through to the end. Whereas it can now loop around under complete control of the, the program and um, effectively make decisions. Now it's kind of a non-trivial task to add that feature. It sounds fairly straightforward but it does require some fairly major redesigns for part of the, the machine. Anybody who's read the book will see that in the second section where I'm building the, uh, the gate, the IC based uh, version of the processor, I did expand it to include these instructions and with integrated circuits that's obviously fairly straightforward but with transistors the, the number of transistors required to do this rapidly grows so I will be presenting some of the circuits that were designed for this, this purpose. Some are a little bit confusing because I've had to optimise them to a certain degree just so that I could implement a, a design that was practical. Uh, and also to limit the number of transistors, otherwise we would be heading up towards a sort of three, three and a half thousand transistor mark. So I have optimised it quite a bit to keep the transistor count down below 2,000. Even so, the, the changes have been fairly significant in terms of the complexity of the, the boards. So to give you an example, uh, this is the uh, original schematic for the breadboard version of the processor. Uh, as opposed to the version that we've got in uh, this design. It's, this, this is the decoder. It, it's not hugely complicated to design, it's just really adding the decoding for the additional instructions. Uh, but it obviously adds transistors. A bigger change was to the uh, control matrix. So this is the design of the control matrix in the original processor. Uh, these are not gates. Uh, I've just drawn it like this to make it easier to understand. So various collections of transistors and resistors are presented here as, as logic gates, whereas in fact the, the discrete transistors. So as you can see, the original control matrix was relatively straightforward. Um, but when we compare it to the control matrix for this design, you'll see that uh, it's, uh, this one is far more complex, has way more than twice as many transistors. Um, but it does give us the extra functionality that we require. There were other large changes required as well, such as adding the carry and zero flag capability to the ALU, and also the uh, program counter itself was far more complex because it needed to be loadable. Obviously a jump is, is really nothing more than reloading the program counter with a new value, but that meant a, a complete redesign of the program counter. So that itself now has nearly three times as many transistors as it uh, originally did and would have had far more, but as I say I've optimised the circuits quite a bit and I will be presenting those in a, a future video. If there are any elements of the design that you'd like me to explain or go over, then, then please let me know in the comments and I'll um, create a video just to cover those so that it's all fully explained. So this processor now is fully functional as I've shown in a recent video, but the recent videos only showed it doing a, a linear program, it, it didn't demonstrate any jumps. So we've now got new firmware um, in the, the ROM and it's running an extremely simple program. So essentially what it will do is it will load a zero value into the accumulator. It will then load a value of one into the B register. It will output the accumulator value to the output register. It will then add B to the accumulator and then it will output that to the output register and it will then jump back and just keep doing the same thing over and over again. But it does demonstrate the jump capability quite nicely. The other thing this program does, although it's only very short, 
is as you uh, will see, it uses almost all the control lines at some point, so it does really fully exercise uh, the processor. So I'll start it running, and you'll see that the output register is counting up in binary, and, and that's what the program is doing. Also, if you look at the program counter, you'll see it's not acting in a, a linear manner. It is uh, effectively jumping back and forth between two different addresses, and then counting, and then jumping back again. So what I'll do, I'll switch the processor into single step mode, and then we'll step through it one instruction at a time, which won't take very long. There are only four instructions in the program. Okay, so the processor is in the reset state. So we're pointing at address zero, and the uh, ROM chip is outputting the the data that's at that uh, that address, and it is uh, going to be an LDA instruction. So the first instruction is to load the value at address one 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 into the accumulator, and the value that's at that address is zero. So in other words, it's uh, going to load a value of zero into the accumulator register. So if we step through the instruction. You'll see it going through the various phases. It's loaded the instruction onto the data bus. Um, and as we step through this instruction, you'll see that value is put out uh, and loaded and latched into the accumulator. So LAA is on, so it's, well, you can't see it changing because it's a zero value. It is loading that zero value from the data bus into the accumulator. And then it will go through onto the next instruction. The next instruction is an out instruction, so it will now output the data in the uh, accumulator register and it will transfer that into the output register. So if we step through the next instruction, this is the beginning of the next instruction, it will output the current program counter address, which is incremented from 0 to 1, and it is now set that address of 0001 and that's been latched into the uh, ROM address latch and as you can see it is the correct address and the argument and opcode will now be loaded the opcode is for an out instruction so if you look at the table that shows the opcodes you'll see that that uh, value of 1110 which is what we've got for the opcode is uh, an out instruction. So if we load that into the control matrix instruction uh, register, you'll see that 1110 is now loaded, it's been decoded, and it's been decoded as an out instruction, which is correct. The control matrix has also asserted the LO, which is the latch output uh, instruction and it's outputting, it's enabled the accumulator, so it outputs the accumulator value onto the data bus. Accumulator value of course being zero because that's what was loaded in the first instruction. And as we step through this instruction cycle, it's loaded that value into the output register. Again, because we're at the beginning of the program, it's the first pass, it's not going to change the value because the value was reset to zero when the machine was booted up. So we'll go through. The next instruction. This is where it um, becomes a bit more interesting. So the next instruction will load a value of 1 into the B register. So we'll select the correct instruction to do that. And you can see that the register B is effectively implicitly loaded. It is um, kind of a working register within the processor that's loaded automatically depending on the instruction that's been run. So in this case, we are running an add instruction. And the add instruction effectively is decoded as meaning get the value that is the argument to the add instruction, use that as the address for the data value that you want to add to the accumulator, load that value into the register B, and then the value at the end of the instruction cycle will be transferred into the accumulator register. One point I'll make here is that at the end of each arithmetic operation, the value that's in the ALU 
is transferred into the accumulator register and that's effectively why it's or essentially why it's called the accumulator register it accumulates uh, arithmetic operation results that's done at the end of subtract or add or anything that will update the alu so in this case we'll go through the rest of the instruction it will load the value of uh, one it will load it from address 1110 and as you can see it's now loaded a value of 1 into register B and as I said the 1 came from the ROM at address 1110 that's what was in the program so it's now loaded that into the register B the, L, the accumulator is currently 0 so 0 plus 1 you can see the results over here is 1 and now this comes to the point of this video really is the next instruction that we need to run is going to be a jump it's an unconditional jump and it will jump back to the line that outputs the data to the output register we've got the arithmetic result for the first pass so it's incremented from 0 to 1 but now we need to um, output the, the data to the output register one thing you'll notice if you've been watching this is that, well I've said it's a value of 1, but currently the LU is showing a value of 2. Um, and that is because, as I said, at the end of each arithmetic instruction, the value in the ALU register is automatically transferred into the accumulator register. So we never directly output the ALU to anything um, other than the accumulator register. And it's the accumulator register value that we used to transfer into other parts of the processor and the reason there's a 2 showing in the ALU now is because we have a 1 in the accumulator and a 1 in the B register and obviously 1 plus 1 is 2 but we won't be outputting the value from the ALU it's the value in the accumulator that will be transferred so if we go through and we load the next instruction you'll see the next instruction um, is a 1100 and if we look at that in the table of opcodes then you'll see 1100 is a an unconditional jump and that is what it's been decoded as and so the control sequence will now go through it's going to enable the um, instruction register so EI is enable instruction the instruction register currently contains these values and it is the lower four bits that we're interested in and you can see that the lower four bits which are the argument are actually the address that we are going to jump to so what's happened now is that because we've enabled the uh, program counter so the address that we want to jump to is going to be the address of the output um, instruction. We have to jump there first and so this instruction has been decoded as a jump. That's caused the LP, the latch program counter control line to be asserted along with the EI enable instruction register and the values, the 4-bit value in the instruction register has been put out onto the data bus and at this point we can, we can ignore the top 4 bits, it's just the bottom 4 bits and that is being latched into the program counter so in other words we're transferring the value from here through the data bus and into the program counter and we'll then go through and complete this um, instruction there are no more steps required in this instruction so all the uh, control lines are, are off and then we go to the next instruction and we're now at address 1 so instead of counting up and going to the next address which would have been address 4 uh, we jump back to address 1 and at address 1, which is the second instruction, if you remember that was an output instruction where we output the value in the accumulator to the output register. And so it will now repeat that instruction, so it will output the data in the accumulator register to the output register, which you can see it's now done. It's transferred this through the data bus and into the output register. And now it will move on to the next instruction loaded the next instruction and that is add so we're back to the add instruction same instruction at the same address that we carried out before and it's going to add one to the accumulator 
So if we go through that instruction, you can see we now have a value of two in the accumulator. Again, the ALU is now showing the combined value of these two, but it's the accumulator that we will now send to the Apple register. So move on to the next instruction, which is a jump. Well, again, we now jump back to the output uh, instruction. So we're now back at the out instruction. It will output the value in the accumulator to the output register. And that's essentially how it's going to continue until we stop it. It's just going to keep going around, outputting the data, adding one, jumping back, outputting the data, adding one. So in other words, the output register will just continue to count up for as long as the processor runs. If I turn the clock to the fast clock mode, you'll see it running at a much higher rate. So you can see this counting up now much more quickly. You'll see some various flickering on the, on the camera, but hopefully you can see it's counting up. The, the bottom LEDs obviously will be looking very strange, but um, the other thing you will notice is that the end of each full count, the carry LED briefly flashes as the carry occurs when the uh, data value overflows and it goes back to zero. And in fact, in the next video, I will show the um, instructions that use the zero and carry flags by way of the conditional jumps.